Right, me again, hopefully I'll get all this stuff right. So it says, uh, take care if you're asked to calculate the displacement. Remember that, that question we did earlier on where we went from the house to the post box and it was 500 meters. And then I came back from the post box to college and it was minus 500 back to the house and minus 3,000 to college. So I was actually minus 3,000 meters away in terms of my displacement. Now I can show it on velocity time graphs. My positive direction, my travel in the positive direction is shown as being above the x-axis. So this is going in the positive direction. Anything which is below is going in the negative direction. It's coming back towards us. So negative direction there. So in terms of a distance, I'm not bothered about the direction. So I just added it together. So in terms of the distance for uh, distance traveled from the house to the college, they're like 4,000 meters. But in terms of the displacement, anything negative is taken away, and I had minus 3,000 for it. So I didn't really care, but with the displacement, I always take away the negative areas. So I'll go to the next page. Right, so I've got a journey here. It says, describe the journey. Really? Right. So let's have a think about this then. Let's have a look at this part here. So the first part is a start at 2 meters per second, and I accelerate uniformly. to a velocity of 6 metres per second uh, over 2 seconds. So I know that my acceleration is 3 metres per second squared. Then, for the next part of the journey, I have a constant velocity of 6 meters per second for 2 seconds. Uh, so maintain a constant velocity oops, of 6 meters per second for a further Two seconds. There. there we go. Right, now then, I'm going to think more about what's going on here. Now, this deceleration, so I have a constant deceleration all the way through. But let's think about the third bit. So I actually stop here and change direction and turn around and come back. So at that point there, I actually change direction. And that's not overly obvious in the complete pack. Right, so, um, what do I do? Uh, so I decelerate from 6 metres per second to being stationary, so 0 metres per second, in 1.5 seconds. In one and a half seconds, can't. and then I change direction, so I turn around. And then this last, this last bit here, as I keep on going down, so I then, so I, so this is a funny one really, because I'm decelerating in the positive direction, but now I'm accelerating in the negative direction. So, so I'll continue deceleration in positive direction at the same rate for a further 
1.5 seconds. But actually what I'm doing is I'm accelerating in the negative direction. So I'm coming back. Uh, give me a chance to copy that bit down. So that's part A done. Right, part B says sketch the acceleration time graph. We've got time now. Uh, sketch the acceleration time graph. So let's do it underneath it. So from 0 to 2, my acceleration is 3 meters per second. So there it is, 3 meters per second. Now then, you can't really spot it, but I actually kind of instantaneously drop down to zero and then stay at zero until four meters per second. And then, this, I've dropped from six in one and a half. It's got a deceleration of minus four. So from four to seven, I'm decelerating at minus four. So this is my velocity in meters per second, and this is my time in seconds. So that deceleration there is, so it's like minus 6 over 1.5, gives me minus 4. So all I've got from 4 going through to 7 is at minus 4. But randomly, it's like an instantaneous change, which isn't true in real life, is it? But it is for us, for our assumptions. Uh, C says the total distance travelled and the final displacement. So C, so total distance. So let's look at the positive bit. So that's going to be a half of, I'm trying to remember how to do the area of a trapezium. Uh, two plus five and a half times six. And then I'm going to add on the bit at the bottom, which is a half base times height, because that's just a triangle. So a half, 1.5 times 6 going in the opposite direction. There. Which gives me, should give me roughly 29 metres. There. Now for my total displacement, I've got my positive. But then the bit underneath is negative, it's coming back. So I've gone forward that distance and now I'm coming back. So I've got a minus. Uh, so I should give you 20 meters there for my displacement. And that's got to be a good place to stop, hasn't it? So there's one more example, but I'm going to leave that for now. Because um, I don't think I've got time to do it, really. I'd have to be really, really quick to do it.